I decided before I knew really anything about net neutrality to talk about net neutrality, which may have been a mistake because it's much more complicated than I thought. And I guess also much more complicated than most people think. Um, but it's a huge topic right now and I thought it would be worth kind of diving in and at least investigating like why it's complicated even more than just like the general idea that we should have it. Um, would you mind moving on? So in, uh, in just a few bullet points, net neutrality is the idea that an internet service provider cannot uh, discriminate based on the content of data or the source of the data in terms of providing it to its customers. So if it has access to that data and you request it, they should give it to you um, at the rate at which all other data is being given to you. And they should not abuse their power to control what other people are seeing. And it just is kind of summed up by the fact that ISPs should be a carrier of the internet, not a filter of the internet for you. And this is obviously like a little bit, uh, I don't know, unrealistic because everything that goes through the internet is going through a variety of services and filters and whatever. So they should filter to the least extent possible. Um, so the, the biggest problem that kind of led to uh, the current net neutrality debate is kind of exhibited here, where you have certain services on the internet that are massively, massively dwarfing the bandwidth compared to other services. And this is from 2014, when the last time before now that this debate became like hugely a big deal. But uh, Netflix probably is even, maybe it's about the same, maybe it's more, but Netflix is one of the largest users of bandwidth. And if you uh, are on that network and a lot of other people are streaming Netflix, your quality of internet will go down at Netflix and on other services because of clogging up the bandwidth. Um, and actually, the I'll get more a little bit into why um, there's a problem with this, but uh, Netflix and the, the providers such as Comcast have very different opinions about how this should be handled. Um, can you go to the next one? So there's uh, a lot of high, pro high profile cases that have kind of led us to where we are. And um, these were referred to by uh, John Oliver as telecom bleepery. <laughs> but, uh, where they were blocking voice over IP in favor of their own phone service so people couldn't use their internet to make calls. And um, that was eventually struck down as, like they weren't allowed to do that, but then there was another case with Comcast throttling BitTorrent, mm -hmm. and actually the, the uh, Court of Appeals upheld their right to do that. They said the FCC couldn't block them from doing that. And then AT&T started blocking FaceTime, which then they agreed to stop doing because people were very upset. Um, and finally, in like 2014, Comcast forced Netflix to pay for faster network access in comparison to what um, other content providers were doing. And T-Mobile also had certain st music streaming apps pay them in order to exempt those streaming apps from their data caps. Um, and then in 2015, uh, under Obama, finally the FCC passed regulations on the open internet, which allowed them to kind of deal with these legal issues in a more like complete framework, which I don't quite understand, but apparently that's what they're trying to roll back now um, under Trump and his uh, telecom, sorry, executive uh, Ajit Pai, who now is the head of the FCC. <laughs> so most people see the internet like this, and I think a lot of politicians do, that you are over here in, in what's called the last mile between your ISP and the internet, and the net neutrality rules only apply to your ability to view the internet at that point. So anything that happens between the ISP and like the rest of the internet is not covered by net neutrality. Um, if you go to the next one. So, what? <laughs> so uh, reality is more complicated. They're like Comcast and Verizon, whatever, are, are tier two service providers and they share network with each other. Tier one providers, which don't sell to consumers, have kind of they control the backbone of the internet and there's very few of them. And then tier two buys network access from tier one. Um, and so there's a lot of like interplays of networks here that are more um, kind of more complicated than just a direct route to the internet, wherever that is. 
Um, and during the Comcast dispute, what was happening was that the speed of Netflix like plummeted in relation to even other providers because Comcast was either preventing them from getting full access to the internet or they were maybe uh, just not updating the servers as required to prevent like problems. I don't know exactly. And finally, they got Netflix to agree to install servers in their own network to serve uh, Netflix faster directly from every location where they had um, like a, a local network. And then you can see that all of a sudden their speeds were comparable to other providers. And what you can see here is that Netflix is actually building their own pipelines to the ISPs and then also serving to tier one, tier two, and everything. And so now like, if I have my own website, I can't do this. If I have a service that's not a multi-million dollar corporation, this is impossible. So what you can see is that like the speed that you get served your data really is dependent on the structure of the network and all the agreements that you don't even have any control over when you're buying your own ISP service. Um, and so I think one of the takeaways for me from all of this is that fundamentally net neutrality is about free speech, but it's actually large corporations fighting each other for access to resources and profits. And so the question is now on the table, do we allow governments to regulate these services as like telecommunications, which is, you know, governments are fallible frequently, um, or do we allow corporations to self-regulate, which I think are fallible even more frequently. <laughs> and so then the, what, what you have to wonder is, is internet access just a right? Does everybody have the right to be able to go online? Or do organizations as like, for instance, if I'm a company or a, uh, a nonprofit, do I have the right to have the ability to serve my data to anybody over the internet? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we're, we're kind of dealing with now, but obviously it's a much more complicated question than just who gets to access the internet because the internet is not a thing, it's many different things. So that's just my little take on it. <laughs>